All right, Shalom Israel. I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim El Shai, the Bawanis, the Apostles, and the Elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to Lek out there, doing this work of faith and labor of love, true sincerity. I want to get into a basic topic, um, yeah, uh, pretty much entitled um, As a Dream. All right, and um, I'm here in the book of uh, Psalms 126. Uh, in verse 1, it says, A song of degrees. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dreamed, you know, and, you know, just thinking about this kingdom being over, man, you know, thinking about, you know, uh, when is our, our job as prophets, you know, of the Lord is going to be done with when the Lord, you know, bring Jacob's trouble, takes us off these streets and, you know, we just waiting for you how it shot to crack them clouds, man, you know. We, we ready to get up out of here, man, you know. And when the Lord do turn around, you know, the captivity and put us back in our righteous estate, it's going to be nothing more, nothing more than a dream. It's going to, that's what it's going to seem like. It's going to seem like everything that we've been through, you know, through these thousand years, through these uh, various reincarnations that we've been in, it's going to seem like one big dream, one big nightmare. That's all it is, man. And, and Esau is, is right there, you know, in our nightmares right now. Esau is our nightmare, you know, every single day because of not only of, you know, the torture, the rape, rob and the murder that he's committed against our people, but how he has the system set up. You know, it's nothing more than a nightmare, not enough time in the day. You know, you uh, can hardly think straight, you know, trying to keep yourself sane. The only thing that's keeping ourselves sane is. Is the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Because this world is, is bonkers, man. Nothing in this world makes sense. That's why this place is Babylon the Great, man. You know? Because nothing in this world makes sense. So we looking to wake up from this damn nightmare in which we're in, man. You know? So it says, When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord have done great things for them. And, you know, the Lord is going to do great things for us, man. The Lord is doing great things for us on a daily, you know. But that time is going to come where, you know, the whole world is going to know it. The whole world is going to see it. And it's not going to be able to be denied, man. You know, all our, our, our work and, you know, us prophesying and, you know, us telling people this and telling people that, you know, heathens coming up against us and, you know, with these... Uh, wayward doctrines and trying to discredit us as being Israelites, trying to discredit us as being, you know, the men of Yahweh, Bashim uh God's chosen people. You know, all of that is going to come to an end, and they're going to have to acknowledge it, man. You know, and that that time is near and dear upon us. It says, uh, verse three, the Lord have done uh, great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams of the south, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. What? Because, you know, every single day, you know, we're struggling and we're striving. Hey, man, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, in, it's, it's tears, man. It's tears coming down our, our not maybe not physically. You know, sometimes brothers may, you know, depending on your situation, you you know what I mean? You may feel like it or whatever, but overall, man, it's just, it's, it's you shedding those tears mentally, man, because of the, the frustration and the stress and the anguish that's constantly being put upon us, man, you know? But they that sow in tears, because it's, it's hard labor, man, you know? And the more we know constantly within this truth, it puts more of that, that uh, puts more of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh's yoke, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh's burdens upon us because we know so much and we know better, you know. And it's and it gets you know a wearisome to the spirit, you know, once you know the truth, you know what our people is uh, destined for. We know the glory that we have, we know the power that we have. We're just like, damn, where is it? Damn, where is it? You know, so we constantly. Uh, sowing in tears, but that time is coming where we're going to reap in joy, man. When Yahweh Shah returns, you know, he that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, you know, 
shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with them. So, you know, Yahweh Shah, he's what bearing the precious seed, man. You know, he carried the nation of Israel upon his back by putting himself on the cross, by being, you know, uh, by self-sacrificing himself, you know, for the greater good of the nation, man. You know, to cast his life away, which he could have lived, you know, in uh, luxury for a lifetime or whatever the case may be. He gave it up for his people, man. You know, but it says he that go forth and weepeth. Bearing precious seeds shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with them, you know. So he's going to bring the elect with them and those of the hopeful elect with them, man. The 144,000, you know, the, the prophets, you know, and the rest of the one third, man, you know, of other men that's out there, you know, who the Lord uh, will deem fit as being the helpers, friends of the prophets, you know, um, and women and children as well. You know, to fill up the kingdom, man. You know? But everything that, you know, we going through now, we got to know that it's only temporary, man. As long as you keep that in your head, knowing that this situation is only temporary, and you just keep that hope within you, you know, for your help, Bashmi, I was second return. You know, that's all we need. And that faith, that's all we need, man. And to stay locked in with these scriptures, whatever time you have of the day, you know, to dedicate unto the Lord. That's all we need, man. You know, because in the midst of all this chaos, this, this scriptures, this is what keeps us balanced. This is what helps to keep us focused because there is no other main focus. There is no other main mission besides doing the will of the Heavenly Father and trying to seek salvation for our lives, man. You know, and, and Esau is constantly trying to put, you know, uh, uh, a hindrance unto that, man. You know, but um, real quick. This is the book of uh, Psalms uh, 73. <clears throat> yeah, this book of, uh, I started, um, I started Psalm 73 and um, 14. It says, for all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. You know, and that's how you feel some, a lot of the times. You know, every single day, you know, we plagued, we chastened, you know, and, and every day you just like, Damn, man, you know, I got to go through this again. I got to go through this again. You know, you just had a, a bad day. Now you're waking up. You know what I'm saying? It's like we, we dread having to get up the next morning just to do the same bullshit all over again, man. You know, it's hey, it's crazy, man. But uh, verse 15, it says, if I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of the Mosai. Then understood I therein, you know. So until David had went into the sanctuary of the Mosai, then he understood what? Esau's end, man, you know. And the whole reason of why we're going through what we're going through. And, and looking at, you know, and, and King David looking at, you know, how... The, the wicked they prospered and how they had more than hearts could wish so on and so forth but he said oh but at the end of the day even though we going through the cell we got the better end we got the better end of the deal you know because their end is utter death and destruction our end lord willing will be the kingdom you know uh i read verse 17 again it says until i went into the sanctuary of the mosab then understood i their end Surely thou didst set them in slippery places, thou cast thou casted them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment they are utterly consumed with terrors? As a dream when one awaketh, so O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image, man. Okay? And part of the Lord awakening, you know, well the biggest part, because you know, the Lord have uh, awoken us, you know, to speak the truth. That's a part of the Lord's awakening. But the ultimate uh, awakening is when, you know, Yahweh Shah makes that second return, you know, because we recognize that the Lord, <laughs> for one, the Lord never went to sleep, you know, but we recognize that the Lord is making moves out here, you know, but to the other people out there, it's like, it's like seeing a person, you know, that's just, that just has their eyes closed. That's how they feel about the Mosai. 
Like if we saying that we have this righteous power, well, he must be asleep. And I believe that goes into like uh, uh, the book of Kings or one of the prophets. I forgot uh, which prophet, you know, and he made mockery of, uh, you know, some uh, some other guys, false gods and said, what well, where's your God at? He must be asleep. He must be asleep or something like that. That's how people feel as though that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is unto us because we proclaiming that we have this righteous power. So these people were saying it and they saying, well, where's your God at? Why is he not making things happen? Okay, but I read this again, uh, verse 20, as a dream when one awaketh, so, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise the image. So when the Lord, you know, uh, sends Jehovah Shah, you know, for the second return, he's going to despise their image, man. You know, the, the scriptures say he shall destroy them with the spirit of his mouth and with the brightness of his coming. So, you know, with the spirit of his mouth, us out there in the highways and byways, we're despising Esau's image breaking down the strongholds and on the physical note, you know, Yahweh Shah is going to come back and bring them to utter desolation and they're going to be known that they are lies, that they're the devils, that they're the deceivers, you know, of the whole world, man. And that the image in which they're portraying is nothing more than a lie, you know, and it's going to be filled so joyous. You know, to know at the end that all our worries and all our troubles is over when this damn devil was put down, man. You know? Um, <clears throat> you're still in the book of Psalms. So I want to bring out one more uh, precept real quick. Um, yeah, uh, this is the book of uh, Psalms 17 and 13. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. You know, so this is exactly what the Lord is about to do. The Lord is about to disappoint them and cast them down and deliver us from the wicked, deliver us from this nightmare, deliver us from this cell, deliver us from the afflictions we constantly feel on a day to day basis, man. You know, what the, the scriptures say that uh, he has set a balance for him that he cannot pass. And that time is up, man. That time is up. You know, verse 14. From men which are thy hand, O Lord, from men of the world which have their portion in this life. So the reason why we're going through, a big reason why we're going through this nightmare, you know, is because our portion was not given in this life. You know, this is not our portion. This is Esau's portion. This is the other nation's portion. All other nations had to rule so that we can have forever, even forever and ever, man. You know? So our portion is not with those of the world. Our portion is not right now, you know. For men which are thy hand, O Lord, for men of the world which have their portion in this life and whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure, they are full of children and leave the rest of their substance to their babes, you know. So this, this is how you know they has to be talking about the so-called white man, you know. Because we don't have anything to give to our children, you know. We barely have anything to move day to day, let alone pass something down, man. You know, unless you passing down, uh, you know what? When when Jake usually die, you know they they, they passing down, uh, you know the the funeral home bills or hospital bills or something like that. That's about it, you know. But this is all everything that we we going through, all of it is part of the nightmare. All this is part of you know what we're going to wake up from man and to you know how just some sometimes you know you might have had a real rough week you know then you actually get a, a real good rest and you wake up you know your body feel refreshed and everything and you just feel like the day might be all right well that's how the kingdom is going to feel but times a hundred man times a thousand man you know every day the kingdom is going to be the the best day of our life man it's not going to be one day was better than the other, man. Every, every day is going to be the best day of our lives in the kingdom. When we wake up from this damn hell, man. You know? Uh, verse 15, it says, uh, As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall.